Okay, so that's, that's it for the short description of our project. Now I just want to, to conclude before we try to have a discussion with some of the challenges we have uh, encountered so far. Our project is not finished at all. It will finish in 2019. Uh, we are only in the phase of uh, constructing the, um, the pilot project, so we still a long way to go. But uh, still, at this stage, we, can, uh, we have observed a certain number of um, favorable or unfavorable uh, uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, in each category, you have some external factors and internal factors. Let me, let me review them with you. So in terms of favorable conditions coming from the outside of Vietnam, uh, the very first favorable aspect is the international commitment and the international awareness regarding climate change and, um, and the sustainable development goals. The vulnerability of the country is also something that uh, attracts uh, favorable support from uh, external sources. Uh, in terms of internal factors that do contribute to the project, uh, positively contribute to the project, the, we have to mention the political expectations about this project. This is uh, the Green Growth Strategy is considered as, a, as an important policy for modernizing the economy of Vietnam, and so there are high uh, expectations on that. And also, over the years, we can still, still see that the, the initial objectives of the Green Growth Strategy are really confirmed by subsequent uh, policies and more recent policies. But on the, uh, on the drawback side, on the unfavorable aspect, um, Vietnam is facing a shrinking ODA, and uh, the global climate finance available is much less than expected, as uh, I discussed at the beginning. So it means that uh, the, the funding sources are not yet fully uh, confirmed. Uh, in terms of um, unfavorable factors internal to Vietnam, we have to mention that there is a kind of competition between various initiatives by different institutions or ministries. Uh, institutions, I mean also uh, 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 development agencies that sometimes have uh, initiatives that are competing really uh, between each other. And so, generally speaking, it is a question of, uh, of coordination and, uh, and coherence that is really key. And so, let's, let me now conclude. Um, so far, what we have served is that supporting green growth and climate finance in Vietnam is really timely. This, we have to do it now. And this is extremely relevant. Nothing has has reduced the importance of the state of, uh, of, of doing that. And it's of course the case in many other developing countries and also in, in the, maybe in developed countries. Of course, one should never forget the shortcomings and the risk of the green growth paradigm and the, green, and the, 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 the specificities of each country that may force to uh, slightly modify the, the way we, we conceive green growth. And of course, uh, it is of extreme importance to share the experiences and make sure we don't repeat the, um, the failures of others and we bet on the best success stories of others. So I would like to conclude with just a few questions just to try to set up a, 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 to, to kick up a discussion. Is there anybody here, here who has uh, an experience with Green World as well? And uh, do you sometimes address that dilemma between development and, uh, and emissions or environmental impact? Um, this, these are two open questions to conclude this, uh, this webinar. Uh, I also take, take the opportunity to, um, to thank you very much. You will have uh, our contact details here. Do not hesitate to get back to me if you have any questions regarding this and to follow our projects on the web uh, because we are going to soon post a few updates about our uh, achievements. So I thank you very much. I get back to the questions in case you don't have any questions. You can read those and try to answer it. So please, the floor is yours now.
And if there are no questions, I'm sure that you can come back to me in the future by email or meeting, of course. Yeah, I see that uh, Miguel is writing something. Perhaps you will wait till he is finished and then. Yeah. Uh, Okay, thank you, thank you, Miguel, for the for the question. I don't know whether everybody sees the question, so let me read it. So uh, the question is whether Vietnam is meeting its its, uh, its objective, uh, especially in terms of energy consumption. Um, so uh, it's it's uh, difficult for me to answer because uh, the the inventory of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions is not done on a very regular basis. So we have we always have to wait, uh, let's say, a few years to be sure that uh, the objectives are reached. The second thing that, uh, I would like to say is that um, if you remember, the objectives were related to uh, express in relation to a business as usual or to, um, or to a unit of GDP. And so with that regard, uh, Vietnam seems to be on the way to achieve its objective, but it may be because the, the business as usual trend is also modified a little bit, or because the, the structure of the GDP behind is changing a little bit. And um, but once again, I think it's a little bit premature to um, to say that the uh, the objectives are are uh, followed. Uh, let me just maybe say that uh, very recently there has been a there has been a revision of the power development plan, which is a very key policy planning for the future of the electricity production sector. And in that new plan, there was an increase of the share of renewables, which is planned by 2020 and 2030. And um, there was also a slight reduction of the, the target demand. So the, the energy efficiency seems to be taken into account. So that's a good point. And there is also a renewable energy development strategy that has been approved, uh, which has a very high ambitions in terms of renewable energy, which is also encouraging. So in a nutshell, uh, it is not possible today to uh, measure the, uh, the impact of this, but in terms of policies and ambitions, we see rather a good trend. I hope that answers your, your question. The question from Milan is um, to have a little bit more details about the involvement of Vietnamese authorities in the design and the implementation of the Green Growth Strategy Facility. So I guess it is uh, focusing on our project, right? Um, the first thing to say is that there are two levels of authorities that are involved in our project. On one hand, we have the national level and on the other hand we have the provinces. So the provinces in the case of our specific project are involved for the piloting phase. So they they had to provide the um, the uh, proposals for green pilot projects and they had to revise it based on a certain number of commands and they will have to implement it and then we we're gonna support them in the in the follow up and the monitoring of uh, those uh, projects. So that's for the provincial level. But of course, our main partner is the national level. In particular, we are working with the Ministry of Planning and Investment. Um, this is a key department, a key ministry in uh, Vietnam for green growth, uh, in particular because the MPI is officially appointed as the coordinator of the Green Growth Action Plan. So that's why uh, with from their perspective, there's a lot of expectations on the, the Green Growth Strategy Facility. And uh, in, regarding the, the Green Climate Fund, the, the MPI is also appointed as contact form. So uh, we call it the National Designated Authority. It means the national contact form between the fund and uh, everything going around the Green Climate Fund in the country. So uh, that means that the, the MPI is very much involved in our project. Is, uh, so we are in a, in a, um, in a co-management co of the project also. Um, so they have uh, almost the lead 
on most of the, uh, the technical and operational aspects. Um, within our projects, and, and actually within the, the upcoming facility, there are other ministries involved. So uh, especially the Ministry of Finance is, uh, is closely involved because as soon as we set up a new fund, getting funding, allocating uh, grants or maybe some other instruments to, uh, to support green growth, uh, the Ministry of Finance um, must be involved. Um, in the facility that we are setting up, so in particular, we set up a technical committee. The technical committee will be in charge of ranking the proposals, uh, looking at the decision criteria, and uh, selecting the projects. Uh, this technical committee actually is already in place. We set up, we, we have put it in place for our pilot project, and um, we, uh, that technical committee is involving not only the MPI, not only the uh, Ministry of Finance, but also many other ministries that, uh, that have a, a close relation with Green Growth. It means, uh, I mean, uh, Ministry of Environment, also the Ministry of uh, Industry and Trade, which is in charge of, uh, of the, um, of the uh, development of the power sector and so on and so on. So there are many ministries involved in the, um, in the, in the technical committee. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. So that concludes our session. So we will um, uh, put on our uh, internal platform the recording and also uh, on the external uh, learning management system that's linked to capacity for that. That's all. Uh, thank you a lot for your participation. And goodbye. See you in the next sessions. Bye-bye. Thank you.